Hi, this is Angela Hansen from the Observatory of Public Sector Innovation. And today I'm going to show you a little bit about the OPSI Toolkit Navigator. So if I share my screen here. Okay, so I'm gonna go over how it was developed uh, what's the value to you as a user and a little bit of how to use it. So I'll do a little demonstration. This was a public service project that was supported by the European Commission through the Horizon 2020 program. And the full OPSI team uh, worked on this project with me. So I have a lot of people to thank as well as a lot of uh, advisors who um, kind of helped me navigate the navigator process. Okay, so in 2017, uh, my task was handed to me to build a toolkit for all public sector innovation everywhere. And my thought bubble was that I'm pretty sure that the world does not need another toolkit. So I even wrote a blog article saying, you know, I think we've reached peak toolkit. There are hundreds of them out there. Uh, you know, they're great, uh, but what is another you know, toolkit? Is it just another piece of noise? Um, maybe we need some signal through that noise. Uh, and so in the OPSI conference of 2017, uh, we did a workshop with uh, public sector leaders, civil servants, uh, and, and others to learn what was their journey when they're trying something new. Uh, so how did they find information? Who did they reach out to? Uh, what tools and methods did they use along their innovation journey? So through that, we learned a lot about uh, how uh, the daily, daily you know, kind of struggles for public sector innovators. Uh, and we use this information to build the uh, navigation around the toolkit navigator. So it wasn't so much of uh, building another toolkit, but helping people find the right toolkits uh, based on their needs. So a really, really, I love this quote from Andrea Siadmok from UK Policy Lab. Um, toolkits are like toothbrushes. Everybody has one, but nobody wants to use someone else's. Um, and that's really, really true, as, as I'll tell a little bit more um, as we you know, researched into the use of uh, toolkits and, and the ones out there. Uh, partially has to do with the number of toolkits available uh, but yeah, there, there are so many out there, uh, but everybody wants to build something new. Um, and that's possible. I'll, tell, I'll talk a little bit about uh, how we incentivize that through the design of the Toolkit Navigator. Um, so something really important kind of back, backdrop for this is uh, the Observatory of Public Sector Innovation Multifaceted Innovation Model. Uh, this is something that came out of our system level studies of the governments of Canada and Brazil. We learned a lot about innovation at the system level and how to support it uh, in different ways and what different purposes does innovation serve uh, in the public sector. So we have uh, directed kind of shaping or top down uh, innovation, kind of mission oriented innovation, things like uh, putting a person on the moon. Uh, and then we have undirected or responding bottom-up innovation, uh, which is kind of innovation for innovation's sake. We don't know what the outcome will be, uh, but we want to create space uh, and just kind of that entrepreneurial spirit to find uh, new solutions. Um, we have, with high levels of certainty, enhancement-oriented innovation. So that's taking existing processes and services and making them better, more efficient, uh, et cetera. So using things like behavioral insights to increase the um, successful uh, payment of taxes on time. Uh, and in uncertain spaces where it's more about uh, exploring and, and kind of radical shifts, um, this is looking at how things inside and outside of government will change the very nature of the type of work we do. So all of these kind of facets of innovation or purposes of innovation are supported by very different uh, methods and very different processes. And there are very different uh, disciplines and domains uh, of practice related to each of these. 
uh, and methods matter. So for each of these, and this isn't necessarily a strict categorization, uh, but certain processes and methods, uh, tools and methods will tend to bias uh, the, the outcomes, the innovative outcomes toward uh, one of these facets. So if you invest heavily in you know, lean business process management, uh, quality control, behavioral insights, uh, you may get a lot of uh, enhancement oriented innovation as an outcome. So this is just to say what you invest in really, really matters uh, in terms of your innovation outcomes. So this is why uh, choosing methods according to your purpose is really, really important and to have that kind of um, awareness is key. So as we researched the uh, existing toolkits that are out there, and, and I think I've looked at, I don't know, 500 toolkits uh, in depth, um, we came across some, some findings. So uh, this, this also came from the uh, uh, user research with public sector innovators as well. So we found that there's a tends to be an over-reliance on tools that worked in the past. Um, that toolkits are often misaligned with problems. Uh, people maybe use a toolkit because it's bright and shiny um, or because their colleague used it, not necessarily because it's aligned to the problem they're facing. Uh, toolkits do not necessarily take into account existing skills. Some need very advanced uh, skills in order to to you know, use the methods. Um, toolkits are too granular or too broad. So I'll get into a little bit more of uh, what what we found there. Um, and toolkits can create this is especially true in the public sector. Toolkits can create a sense of learned helplessness among innovators. Uh, so. A toolkit is a nice, you know, polished thing oftentimes, and uh, people find that difficult to, to break. They don't want to break this nice thing that's been produced for them, uh, but their situation and context might require that they do so in order to have the right method uh, or toolkit uh, for their uh, problem and for their context. So these are some interesting findings uh, that we learned. Um, we, we suggest that the ideal toolkit should be adaptable and transferable, uh, not necessarily directly transferable. Uh, it should be approachable and user-centered. It should be obvious what to do with it. It should be action-oriented. So toolkits are very different than uh, guidance or uh, knowledge bases. Toolkits are about getting to some kind of action. Uh, and toolkits should be modular. You should be able to use one part of one toolkit and another part of the other uh, to suit your context and problem. We organized the, uh, the existing toolkits, which we call the compendium of toolkits, uh, around innovation tasks or jobs to be done. So when we think about this, we often think of problem solving jobs. These are the typical things we think about when, when we think of a toolkit. You know, we need to figure out a way to do um, discovery. Uh, we need to figure out how to prototype um, in order to solve the problem at hand. But there are also tasks or jobs to be done inherent in these toolkits that have to do with things like group behavioral jobs. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about, about that. Um, there are approach planning jobs. So what do you need in order to get started? Uh, very preliminary scoping kind of exercises. Uh, and there's contextualization jobs of understanding uh, the dynamics of the context in which you're working. So that doesn't necessarily need to come before problem solving jobs. Um, and you don't need a toolkit to have all of these things. Um, but oftentimes toolkits have more than just the problem solving jobs and oftentimes uh, the work of a public sector innovator is well beyond uh, the uh, problem solving itself. It has to do with group coordination, um, you know, setting up uh, good experiences for your collaborators, figuring out partnerships. So all of that isn't necessarily included in the problem solving process itself. So we wanted to make sure that uh, innovators were able to find 
uh, these other kinds of uh, do these other kinds of jobs and find toolkits that support them. So just some examples of group behavioral jobs. So these are things like building consensus, building shared understanding, uh, converging on a decision, challenging assumptions, uh, cultivating a different mindset. So these are, as you can see, uh, they may be involved in some parts of the problem solving process. Uh, and sometimes you need, you know, sometimes a task of an innovator may be to break existing habits and rituals, for instance, and you might want something specific to do that. And that's part of that modularity we, we talked about. Uh, again, here's another example of some contextualization jobs. So visualizing a system or set of relationships, imagining different futures. Uh, this is really going several layers below the problem itself uh, and looking at the, the people and uh, the system uh, that you're working in. So then we, we looked at, okay, what is a toolkit and what is it not? Uh, a lot of these toolkits have different names associated with them, uh, you know, methodologies, tactics, playbook, guidance, tools. Uh, what are all these things and how do they fit together? Because some of them, uh, you know, there's different levels of granularity here. A methodology, uh, overall methodology, uh, such as, you know, design methodology is a very, very kind of abstract level. Uh, and something like a technique, uh, such as using uh, paper-based forms is a really, really kind of, uh, you know, uh, specific uh, kind of thing. And these toolkits that we looked through had all levels of these things, um, sometimes all in one. So it was really important to tease out uh, what these toolkits had in them. Uh, and especially if you're looking for something at the right level of abstraction for you. So if you're looking at, you know, I just want to learn more about behavioral insights. Uh, I don't necessarily need to do it right now. Um, I just want to learn more about it and how it's been applied or how it could be applied. You may want to look more at the, the method or the methodology uh, of behavioral insights. Whereas if you want to set up a randomized control trial, you might need more of a manual. Uh, for that. Um, and I should also mention this is going a little bit into the weeds, but some practices and disciplines are uh, better served by things like manuals. So behavioral insights and randomized control trials is one of them. Uh, for other practices and disciplines, uh, they're not yet there to the level of, uh, you know, having that level of repetition. Maybe they shouldn't. Uh, so we, we found some interesting um, things there as well. I won't get into that uh, today. So uh, looked at hundreds of these uh, toolkits and uh, tagged them with these different uh, disciplines or practice, uh, these jobs to be done, uh, what they included, what they didn't, and many, many other fields that I couldn't put in this one shot or you wouldn't be able to see uh, anything, but we, we did a lot of analysis um, and built some initial navigation based on that analysis. So we tested uh, initial uh, designs and with that same audience, public sector innovators, uh, and asked them kind of what, what was this helpful for them? Uh, what would they have liked to see? What did they expect uh, once they kind of went down a certain path? Uh, and uh, from that information, we built uh, further iterations. We uh, also, we tested this initial, uh, well, several different uh, prototypes with national government innovation leaders from uh, several governments, as you can see, and they provided uh, 349 pieces of feedback on our prototypes. Uh, so based on that feedback, uh, we changed the, the design of the toolkit navigator significantly um, to suit their needs. So um, we also believe that the best way to build innovative capacity is to build your own toolkit or adapt one. 
So we placed special emphasis on the toolkits that are freely, actually we only include freely accessible toolkits, uh, including those that you may have to enter your email and exchange, um, but they are accessible uh, without a cost. Uh, whereas some of them, you know, you have to pay, you know, a, a, an organization or company for access to the toolkit. So we only provided ones that uh, you can ac access for free. Uh, and um, we also gave special preference, and we, we use this in kind of like the, the ranking and sorting of the toolkits in the Navigator, as you'll see, uh, based on the ones that are easier to adapt and modify and remix because in that act of remixing and adapting to your own context, you are in fact building capacity uh, within your own teams. And oftentimes that is the limiting ingredient uh, for, for innovation. So we gave the toolkits badges. So uh, open source basic uh, badge allows for reuse. So you can download it, you can print it, you can print as many copies as you want. Uh, and uh, that's that. An open source champion is licensed with uh, you know, Creative Commons uh, license, for instance, uh, certain Creative Commons licenses allow uh, remixing and adaptation uh, of, of toolkit content. And then there are some that went above and beyond. Uh, we call them heroes. They provide editable files uh, or code uh, so not only do they say, we want you to remix and adapt our content, but here's an easy way to do it. So uh, these uh, badges appear on each of the toolkit pages, as I'll show you. Um, something else we learned uh, from our research is people really want that social proof that trying a new method or new practice is uh, uh, is scary and they want to see that someone else has done it before. Um, even if it's maybe not the same exact context, not the same exact problem, but someone like me has tried something new, nothing bad happened, nobody died, actually maybe some good things happened. Uh, and so we connected the toolkits to our case study uh, platform uh, on the OPSI website as well which has hundreds of cases of innovation in government uh, with, with uh, some impact uh, as a result. So the toolkit uh, is not only the tools themselves, um, but it also connects to these cases and specific contexts. And uh, it also connects to the, the um, user base of the OPSI uh, platform, which has, uh, I'm told by my colleague, 1,700 uh, plus members as of today. Um, so these are largely other public sector innovators around the world uh, who um, may, you know, uh, may use these toolkits. Uh, they may, you may want to have discussions with them. They're providing reviews on toolkits. They're providing cases. Um, and it's just someone to connect with if you um, if you want that social proof or you want to ask what you may see as a dumb question or you don't have a lot of collaborators inside your organization uh, to ask, um, this is our global network uh, that uh, we, we offer uh, as public service. So um, this is just the, the landing page of the Toolkit Navigator and what I'm going to do next is show you uh, kind of what it looks like and show you a couple of use cases um, as well. Okay, so this is it. Um, so we organized the content by topics, uh, by actions that people uh, said that they often want to take when starting down their innovation journey. Um, and uh, connecting to others. So I'll give you some examples of uh, potential navigation paths. Uh, so let's say uh, you want to find information about uh, digital and technology transformation. So you would click on that. Uh, you there are little index articles for each uh, discipline or practice that tells you a little bit about the practice overall, um, some basic principles if they exist, um, some OECD guidance if it exists, 
some uh, considerations for use in the public sector. So these practices do not necessarily all belong to the public sector and digital is one of them. Uh, but what do you need to consider in particular when uh, using this practice uh, in the public sector? Uh, we have some typical methods and tools uh, and related OECD guidance. And then importantly, what to consider when choosing a toolkit in this discipline or practice. So this is kind of uh, guided, uh, uh, guided to some navigation that helps you find the right um, toolkit for you. And as you can see on the right, uh, there's some uh, there's some toolkits here that uh, you can choose from as well. And these are based on uh, kind of they're sorted by relevance and who finds these uh, most uh, useful. And I'll show you how we get that data in a minute. Um, okay, so let's take a look at one of these. Let's say, okay, here's the Australia Digital Transformation Toolkit. That sounds interesting. From the government of South Australia. Uh, so each, each toolkit has its own page. Uh, it has a very, very uh, quick overview. So if you're trying to look through many toolkits all at once and you don't have a lot of time to go through the toolkit itself, this is a very, very high uh, overview uh, of that toolkit. Um, as you can see, you see that badge here. This is a uh, hero. Uh, so editable source files are available uh, for this toolkit. So we have the publisher here. We have a link to the toolkit itself. Uh, and we have a link to the editable content. Uh, we also have the uh, discipline or practices that are related. Uh, to this, of course, digital transformation, uh, but also strategic design. So we looked through these toolkits and, and some of them really have, it's a, it's a many to many relationship here, uh, or I'd say one to many in this case. So this toolkit has, you know, you can use it for a couple of different purposes, strategic design or digital transformation. Uh, and that's the case with many of the toolkits in here. They often support uh, kind of many or include many disciplines or practices. So a little bit of meta information. Uh, we have the license information, the country or territory that, uh, the, that uh, the toolkit is from and some features. So let's say if you're a checklist kind of person and you want to you know, make sure that, uh, that that's how you organize your, your work, um, this is a toolkit that has that checklist in it. So it may be you know, steps in a process, uh, maybe that's how you work, um, and you want a toolkit specifically for that, this one has it. Um, if I clicked on here, you would also see all the other toolkits that also have checklists in them. Uh, it has the type, so the guidance, it's guidance and a tool slash tool set. So it doesn't necessarily have a manual, it's not a playbook, um, it's being really specific about uh, what, what it is and what it isn't. Okay, then you see, uh, I'll go back to these little boxes. Uh, at the bottom, there are other toolkits related to um, strategic design, um, because that's primarily what this toolkit's about. So that's the first one listed here. Um, you can also find other toolkits about digital transformation if you click on this, this uh, uh, link here. Okay, so something um, to point out here, and this is available for logged in users, uh, you can see here that uh, you can indicate whether you use this toolkit. So if I click on here, uh, if I'm logged in, uh, you can tell that I logged in because my um, avatar shows up in the top right corner. Um, it will show I have used this toolkit. You can also save the toolkit. So this will appear in your user profile. So let's say you want to compare a bunch of different toolkits or if you're navigating through several in one sitting and you say, oh, I really want to go back to that one from Australia, but I don't remember which one it is, uh, you can go to your user profile and find it again. So I'm going to also save this just to show you what it looks like. Okay, so this toolkit has been saved two times. So there's um, one other fan of the Australia Digital Transformation Toolkit uh, besides me. Um, okay, I'm going to show you another, uh, another uh, path here. And let's say, um, let's say I want to do one of these take action steps. So let's say I want to design a new strategy. So I'm going to click on that. 
Okay, so this is uh, similar to that page I showed you before on digital transformation, but this is more about an approach. So let's say you have a specific problem of uh, you need to design a new strategy. So there are certain toolkits that are related to that. Uh, they're less about solving a specific and, and well-framed problem. You may not have that yet, but you may need to, let's say, uh, design a, a strategy for your new innovation team, let's say. Uh, so here you see some uh, kind of guidance on how you might do that. And each of these links is linking to different uh, collections of toolkits in the navigator uh, based on your needs. So let's see here, depending on your role, toolkits intended for policymakers, practitioners, or stakeholders outside of government more be, more, might be more pertinent to you. So let's say you're a policymaker. You say, okay, well, I want to design a new strategy and uh, I want to see the ones that are specifically made for policymakers like me. Uh, this takes you to a filter view. And on the, the right here, you see uh, all of the toolkits that have to do with strategic design. You can see that that's checked here uh, and that are specifically uh, made for policymakers or advisors. So you can see there are several here. So you can search, instead of searching through all, you know, uh, instead of searching through hundreds uh, of the toolkits, uh, you can look at the ones that are uh, specific to you. And let's say, okay, there's still too many here. Um, let's see, I want ones that also include some specific techniques of how to actually do this. So it looks like there are six of them within here, uh, the existing selection. So this, this shows me uh, strategic design toolkits for policymakers uh, that also have techniques uh, for doing that kind of work. Okay. So I'm going to show you one more uh, path that you might take. You might land on the Toolkit Navigator page and say, I want to connect to others. That's something we heard a lot. Uh, um, oftentimes, uh, innovators want to know others who have done this before, not only see the cases that they've done or use specific practices, uh, but they want to connect with them as well. Um, let's say I want to access expertise or advice. So um, there's a little bit of guidance here on um, accessing that expertise or advice. So it goes into things like build versus buying skills and things like that. Um, and it talks about kind of the, o the OECD's um, advice on this more or less. Okay. And at the bottom, you'll see that uh, the toolkits have been organized by kind of the sub tasks related to uh, connecting to others or accessing expertise and advice. So team building and lab practice, there are some toolkits that specifically relate to that. So see toolkits good for building a team or a lab. Let's check that out. Okay. So this is a subset of the toolkits that have to do with that. So somewhere in this, the, all of these toolkits, they talk about good team practice or how to set up uh, an innovation lab. So growing government innovation labs, for instance, this uh, toolkit. Okay, um, let's say that you have something really specific that you want to search for. So maybe you want uh, only to look for policy innovation. So I can type in that keyword and it will search the toolkits for uh, policy uh, related toolkits. So like any, you know, like a Google search, but it's searching only um, through the toolkit uh, descriptions and uh, texts. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more thing here. There are a couple of curated, uh, kind of custom curated uh, collections of toolkits based on the, uh, the demand that we've heard. So a lot of people ask us for game-based toolkits. 
Uh, so we've made a collection of those. So these are all the toolkits that have a game component um, to them. So it's, it's filtering out those um, specific toolkits. Okay, um, and you'll also see the highly adaptable toolkits that's filtering out for uh, the uh, toolkits that are licensed for that uh, reuse and, and uh, adaptation remixing. And then um, starter toolkits. So these are ones that have a lot of guidance uh, a lot of uh, text and you, you don't need to necessarily be uh, really advanced in your innovation practice in order to pick one of these up uh, and just get started. So we've made a curation of that as well. And then importantly, uh, there's a little bit of uh, background about the toolkit navigator itself. Um, but if you see some, if you know of a good toolkit and it's not here, uh, we want to see it. So we also provide uh, a uh, opportunity to share something that you find and you think other uh, innovators would find valuable as well. So this goes to our form where you can submit a new toolkit. Uh, keep in mind that, uh, again, we want to include only toolkits that are freely accessible uh, that you think would be interesting for the public sector context, not necessarily only the public sector context, but um, some relevance, at least. And they're about stimulating action versus reports and research, which are more about building a body of knowledge, uh, but not about getting to action. Uh, we will review uh, the toolkit submissions before we publish them. Um, but we default to including um, as, as many as possible. So please feel free to add something you find other, you think others would find uh, valuable. Okay, um, well with that, uh, I think that's, that's all I have to uh, share with you today. I really hope that you uh, use the Toolkit Navigator. I hope you find it valuable. Uh, and please do reach out um, if you um, have, have some feedback for us. Uh, or if uh, you um, have some questions about the Toolkit Navigator or would like to partner with us as we build it out because we are still um, developing it. It's a constant work in progress. All right. Um, well, thanks for, uh, thanks for listening and uh, see you on the Opsi platform.